Welcome back. Australia is in a state of limbo. It's been almost two weeks since Australians went to the polls to elect a new government. But none of the two core political parties, namely the Labour government and the Liberal National, is in the position to form a government after the recently concluded election produced a hung parliament. What does it take to break the deadlock and end the political quandary in Australia? And will this mark the end of Julia Gillard as Prime Minister? An election result that's too close to call. Even after more than 80% of the votes counted, Australia's leadership remains in a state of limbo. Neither the governing Labour Party nor the Liberal National Party secured a majority in Parliament. Confusion or simply a lack of faith. A lot of it was just a dissatisfaction with the Labour Party and people, although voting's compulsory, uh, significant numbers didn't vote. Um, a little more than usual anyway. And I, I think that um, when people are disinterested um, and can't get a firm hold of what the difference is between the parties, then they'll often vote against the party in government. 44-year-old accountant Steve Douglas is among many Australians who did not exercise his right to vote in the inconclusive federal election. For one, he did not see a major policy difference between the two core parties. The failure of the two key party leaders in assuring voters that they're the best candidates to lead Australia has also convinced them not to vote this time around. I don't think they're offering enough to the individual candidate to, to stand up and, and be worthy of a vote if it's not mandatory as it would be if I was living in Australia. Julia Gillard, who was seeking a popular mandate from the electorates, called for the election only after eight weeks upon assuming office. But the move may have backfired on her and the Labour Party. Even the traditional Labour supporters remain unconvinced that she would carry out the series of reforms which the Labour government had promised to do but failed to deliver. Tony Ross is among many staunch Labour supporters who had shifted her loyalty to the Green Party due to Labour Party's lack of resolve to realise its climate agenda. People just uh, lost faith in Labour in a dramatic way when they announced that they would defer the ETS, the Emissions Trading Scheme, that Rudd had been apparently so passionate about. Uh, the Liberals blocked that. Um, but rather than fighting for it, they dropped it, dropped the ball. And um, a lot of the polls show that that's when Rudd's popularity just plummeted. And um, I know, again, a lot of, actually a lot of people voted for the Greens this time around because of that. So it was a protest vote against Labor. Steve, however, blamed the inconclusive results on the way the previous Labor Prime Minister Kevin Rudd was ousted from power to make way for Julia Gillard to assume the premiership. I think she, she certainly should have paid a lot more respect to Kevin Rudd and I think she should have waited and allowed him to run out full term and if he had lost it would have been on his head and then she could have properly and appropriately stepped in to fill the shoes getting ready for the next election but I think it was a massive mistake and perhaps could be the last chance she'll ever get and I think she's ruining that day right now Ms Gillard's failure is necessarily Mr Abbott's success Liberal leader Tony Abbott had delivered a surprising number of votes for his coalition after a disciplined campaign. Tony Abbott managed to pull off a good campaign in the end. He was largely seen as an outsider uh, throughout the last uh, 12 months, but his campaigning showed that some of these issues um, were not resolved and uh, people knew what he stood for. And enough people voted for him to, for the Liberal Party to be in the position it's in. But so far, neither party has a sweeping mandate to rule. The August 21st polls had delivered Abbott's Liberal and National Coalition 73 seats and Gillard's centre-left Labour 72, but gave neither party the 76 seats needed to rule. 
With votes still being counted, Gilad and Abbott are attempting to woo independent lawmakers onto their side to get the numbers to form a government. The form of the next government will be a minority administration, which is already clear. It will boil down to what the independent MPs decide. Who calls the shots are the independents. Whichever party, whether it's Labour or the Liberals, satisfy most of the desires of these independent MPs and their local constituents will be the ones to provide the government of that day. The three independents, uh, Tony Windsor, Bob Catter and, and uh, Rob Oakeshott, they really hold the decision who the next government is within, within their hands. Uh, and it depends. Will they go with the Liberal and National Coalition or will they go with Labor? A little bit of it is deal making. And, you know, obviously the Greens had a preference towards Labor. You know, virtually all the, the Greens votes on secondary preference went into the Labor Party and helped them enormously on this campaign. And hence, if it was the Greens that were holding the balance of power, I think we'd see a Labor government. But given its three conservative independents that are probably going to be the, the vast, you know, strong majority of that independent flock, I can see a Liberal government coming in. Whoever will lead Australia next.